see if any progress will be made between the two leaders on denuclearization. This is their second summit following last year's meeting in Singapore. It's great to be with you. We had a very successful first summit. I felt it was very successful. And some people would like to see it go quicker. I'm satisfied, you're satisfied. We want to be happy with what we're doing. But I thought the first summit was a great success. And I think this one hopefully will be equal or greater than the first. And we made a lot of progress. And I think the biggest progress was our relationship. And as I've said many times, and I say it to the press, I say it to anybody that wants to listen, I think that your country has tremendous economic potential, unbelievable, unlimited. And I think that you will have a tremendous future with your country, a great leader. And I look forward to watching it happen and helping it to happen. And we will help it to happen. After the one-on-one -on -one talks, the leaders dine together with their aides. They will meet again on Thursday with the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula at the top of the agenda. Trump is expected to urge Kim to take concrete steps such as dismantling nuclear facilities in Nyombyo. Before the first summit, the U.S. was calling for complete, verifiable and irreversible denuclearization. But coming into round two, Trump said there's no rush as long as there's no testing. It's believed Kim will call on Trump to ease economic sanctions against Pyongyang. Trump says there will be a news conference at some point during the day. Earlier I spoke with NHK World's Mami Mochizuki and Kengo Okamoto, who are in Hanoi for more details. Let's start with you, Mami. What's been your impression of the day so far? Well, one thing that stood out to me is Trump's messaging around the summit. He keeps hammering home the idea about how North Korea's economic development could be like Vietnam's. In tweets, he said the potential for that to happen is awesome and that the North could become an economic powerhouse. And at the top of the meeting with Kim, as we saw earlier, Trump reiterated the same message. Also, when Trump met with the Vietnamese president, he said, you are an example of what can happen with good thinking. So Trump is sending a clear message, and it seems to align with his business-focused worldview. The question is, how receptive is Kim to that message? Another thought, I'm wondering how focused Trump is on task at hand here. He was tweeting about jobs in Michigan, a Democratic senator, and his former lawyer, Michael Cohen. Experts have said Trump is looking for a win here in Hanoi to distract from domestic problems back at home. I want, but I wonder if it's the president who might be distracted by Cohen's testimony to Congress on Wednesday. With Trump under pressure to walk out of this big summit with something tangible, some experts say he might offer some concessions to move negotiations forward. Maybe there's movement toward de de declaring an end to the Korean War or a permission for humanitarian aid workers to enter the North or some other economic incentive. We'll get a better sense of that tomorrow. Let's turn now to Kengo. What's going through your mind as you see the initial images of the leaders' meeting? 
Yes, James. Uh, I thought their first encounter here in Vietnam looked similar to the one we saw last year in Singapore. But one thing stood out to me, uh, both readers appeared in front of the media and allowed relatively open coverage of their initial remarks. Uh, for the North Korean leader, that's really unusual. And I think he wants to demonstrate that he's a typical world leader who can negotiate with the U.S. on equal footing. Uh, turning to the overall picture uh, in the summit, I think uh, expectations are high. Uh, there's hope that uh, the denuclearization process will get back on track and for, improve, for an improved relationship between both sides. Last year's summit was historic and full of symbolism, but it was just a starting point for negotiations. And it's been a bumpy road since then. The leaders entrusted their aides, Mike Pompeo and Kim Yong Chong, to get work done on the Singapore promises. But it doesn't seem like they got very far. North Korea's foreign ministry once compared Pompeo to a gangster. And American officials have said they don't think Kim is going to give up all of his weapons or programs. So now uh, the ball is back in the leader's court. We spoke to an expert on North Korean politics who spelled out how important this meeting could be for Kim. With the upcoming summit, Chairman Kim Jong-un is putting his regime and his fate at risk. It doesn't look like he has visited any firms or factories this year, even though he has repeatedly stressed how crucial it is to develop the North's economy. I think Kim has probably been concentrating on diplomacy and his relationship with the U.S. So Kim may be ready to make some concessions in order to boost the North's economy and security. Maybe he'll offer to dismantle some missile tests and launch sites, or the Nyambyan nuclear facility that has produced fuel for nuclear weapons. Maybe uh, he'll even allow some foreign inspectors in to verify that process. But there's one concession I don't think he offer, and that's handing over an inventory of his nuclear facilities, programs, and weapons. Pyongyang believes that's basically why like handing over a target list to the U.S. Kim is rightly fully aware that although both sides are currently talking, the relationship could uh, decrease sour once again. And earlier I spoke with Professor Yasuhiro Izumikawa from Chuo University. Professor Izumikawa is an expert on U.S. foreign policy. The two leaders met again face-to-face. -face. What were your impressions? Well, two things struck, struck me. One is that the uh, how cautious Kim was. I mean, he, he looked even nervous sometimes. And, and maybe that's because that he, he tried to sort of uh, gauge how the Trump was responding to what he said, or, 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 or whatever. And the second is that the uh, while uh, Kim Jong Un talked about the difficulties on the path towards the second summit meeting, uh, Trump didn't say anything about that. So that seems to indicate that the uh, North Korea was really uh, sort of dragging its feet uh, before actually agreeing to the second summit. The summit comes as Trump deals with a host of problems back home. How do you think that could influence what happens in Vietnam? Right. I mean, I mean, definitely it weakens the U.S. negotiation position, of course. And uh, uh, well, President Trump has a lot of domestic problems, such as the Russia investigation and uh, uh, turmoil concerning the uh, uh, emergency declaration con uh, about the, the, the border wall. Uh, and uh, Trump's approval rating is now really going really low. So uh, he's coming to the meeting uh, uh, sort of from the, the position of the weakness. And uh, uh, as many people point out, that, you know, this is some place where he needs to show some kind of uh, uh, achievement. And uh, uh, you know, we are hoping that that will not motivate him to make unnecessary concessions towards North Korea. Trump came into the summit saying he's in no rush for the North to denuclearize as long as there is no testing. What impact do you think that will have on the talks? Mm -hmm. Well, very few people would expect that the North Korea's denuclearization will happen like on the spot. 
Uh, so, I mean, it, it's not too difficult to imagine that it's going to take some time. Uh, what's more important here is that the, the fact that he actually had to say it in public before the negotiation occurs. And, uh, uh, of course, I mean, it weakens the U.S. starting position, but uh, 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 the fact that he actually said it uh, is is the uh, indication that uh, this negotiation is going to be very difficult for the U.S. Professor, what do you think the most likely outcome of the summit will be? Mm -hmm. Logically thinking, uh, North Korea and the United States would look for some kind of a you know, least common denominator. Uh, they may agree on like, you know, the limited inspection of North Korean facilities in exchange for uh, humanitarian aid, or even the opening of the U.S. liaison office in Pyongyang, uh, or uh, they might actually just agree on holding the third summit without any concrete progress. So uh, we'll see what's, what's going to happen tomorrow.